Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to actually learn mathematics, how to actually take a more advanced math book like this one and read it and learn from the book. And I think that could be helpful, so I think this might help you, and I thought I should make this video because maybe not everyone in the world knows how to do that. So I'm going to give you a way that you can do that. So this book is called Functional Analysis, a short course, and it's by Edward W. Packle. And I haven't really looked at this book too much, to be honest. Um, so we're going to open it up and let's just try to explain some of the mathematics. Really nice book. And let's just go straight to the math. So here we've got the contents. We'll go briefly, but I want to jump into the mathematics right away to actually show you how you can learn mathematics. Because it's one thing to talk about it and say, hey, you should do this and that. It's another thing to actually sit down with a book that is very hard to read for most people and show you how to read it. So let's go to the beginning here. It talks about set theory, topology, analysis. Okay. And then here we go topological linear spaces, chapter one. Okay, what's this? Definitions and basic properties. Let K denote either the field of real numbers R or the field of complex numbers C. A linear space X is a vector space over K, okay? What's this? This looks even more complicated. Let's zoom in and let's look at this. This looks really, really different. I don't know if you've ever seen anything like this. You probably haven't seen this type of math. This is not something that um, you may have never seen, okay, these definitions. Um, I think most people watching this video I'm going to guess have never seen these definitions. Um, if you have, I'll leave a comment because I'm curious because I bet very few people have. So let's let's read these and let's interpret them. U is point absorbing if for every x in x there is an r greater than zero such that alpha x is in U for all alpha and k with the modulus of alpha less than or equal to r. Okay, then they indicate that that uh, the bars denotes the absolute value in R and the modulus on C. Very nice. So you can do it for real or complex numbers. I love how that just simplifies so much, right? The modulus pretty much reduces to the absolute value if you look at the formula. So let's focus on this. U is point absorbing if for every X and X there is an R greater than zero. So you read that and if it's too much for you, this is what you do. This is how you actually learn. You say, okay, for all, that means for all, that upside down A, for all X and X, Notice my capital X, right? For all X and X, there exists an R greater than zero. So I would write there exists R greater than zero such that, so, you know, you're trying to learn. So you're trying to write as least as possible so that your hand doesn't get tired. So you can continue learning more math. So, you know, you abbreviate everything such that alpha X is in U. So I'm just going to say alpha X is in U for all alpha and K with the modulus of alpha less than or equal to r. So you see you've taken that entire sentence there and you've written it down. Let me fix my camera here. I apologize. My setups are very good. Someday I will get a better camera. Hopefully you can read that. I think you can. I think the focus is coming in pretty good. For all x and x, there exists an r greater than zero such that alpha x is in u for all alpha and k with modulus less than or equal to r. And that is called uh, U is point absorbing if it satisfies this property. So any set that satisfies this property is absorbing or point absorbing. So uh, U is point absorbing. This is straight from the book. So interesting, right? So this is right at the beginning of the book. Um, and again, it's probably something you haven't seen. Then it goes on and says U is balanced if alpha and U is a subset of U whenever the modulus of alpha is less than or equal to one. And then it goes on and it just keeps defining things. So that's the first step. You know, that's the first step. So step one is you, you know, you write that down. And then from here, uh, where do you go next? Well, you keep reading and then you just keep doing that every time you run into something you don't understand. Let's let's jump ahead. Let's see if this book has exercises. I don't know. Let's explore. This is kind of fun. So it's more. The oh, here we go. Exercise 1.2. Prove that the convex hull of a balanced set is balanced. Okay, cool. And then I, don't, I bet the book does not have solutions. Um, usually these books don't have solutions. Let's check it out. And I wanted to pick a harder book for this video that I hadn't looked at because I wanted to make a point, right? You can pick up a math book 
and you can learn and that's how you do it. You write down what you read. Notice how my writing was very much smaller compared to theirs. And I think that's the key thing, is you have to write what you read. Um, you can't just read math. You have to actually do math. And so if there's no example, or if you feel like there's examples missing, or if a definition is unclear, it's always really important to write it down. When you're not sure, write it down. You know, if you're in a Calc 2 class, and you're doing like series and stuff and you're not really sure why it converges try to make sure you are sure you know and, and try to write down your your you know your solution that's really the first time uh, most math students start writing down solutions it's, it's calc 2 when they do series and that's when you start writing stuff down like this you start saying you know hence and i don't know math gets a little more beautiful at that point i think and it's just something to uh to be appreciated yeah awesome book so hopefully this video has helped you a little bit um, just go through and just write everything down. That's my, my number one tip. And again, you should be able to translate what you read into your own language or whatever you feel comfortable with. You know, if you don't want to use this symbol, you can say for all, right? You can say for all. And if you don't want to, you know, write this, you can say there exists, right? So you can, if you feel like you just really feel like you need to write those extra words because they'll help you out because at that point in time you're thinking I'm kind of tired or ah, I'm just having a hard time focusing on this or it doesn't make sense or you know write it out write it out write it out carefully and think about it and I think it'll help you so this book let's take a look at this book this book is on functional analysis let's see let's see who the target audience is let's see if we can find that somewhere in the book here we go I think that's I think that's it here. Let's read this. It's the preface. I love the preface. Experience has convinced me that an appropriately chosen subset of material from the vast and growing field of functional analysis can simultaneously illustrate its beauty, its wealth of application to other areas of mathematics and to physics, and it's worth in bringing it together in a most natural way standard undergraduate materials and analysis algebra and topology, right? So it has a lot of the intended audience for the material in this text can be described as mathematically mature and motivated undergraduates. Yes, which safely covers extremes from pre-motivated undergraduates. Which safely covers extremes from pre-motivated, yeah, precious juniors to graduate students who have been deprived the pleasures of modern clean soft analysis. Yeah, so it's it's a little bit different. Um yeah, I, I got to give it a whiff really quick here because it's just drawing me. Oh, oh, that was amazing. That was amazing. What a fun book. Functional analysis is a fun subject. So, yeah, motivated students who've had some, some math, basically. And you have to be able to read it and, again, understand it and write it down. So, anyways, thought I'd make this video. Until next time, good luck. Take care.